when the hero of any up-to-date science fiction show has a problem, he usually turns to his trusty computer for an answer. Somehow or other, science fiction computers always manage to think of something. Sometimes they think so hard, they get up tight. They blow their cool. This computerized robot spent the better part of a one-hour TV show thinking himself into falling in love with another robot, of course. But how about real-life computers? Do the so-called thinking machines really think? Well, do computers really think? To answer that, we'll have to find out what the word think means. Let's see if our computerized friend can help. My data bank dictionary has many definitions of the verb to think. Uh, what's the first one, please? To think, to call to mind, to remember. People can't always recall things the instant they want to. But storing information and recalling it is something electronic computers do remarkably well. In fact, it is this ability that makes their operation automatic. Once programmed, it can refer to its own memory for instructions and data. Of course, memory devices aren't new. They came into existence as soon as man learned he could use substitutes or symbols to represent the things he wanted to remember. The next time he wanted to know how many cows he owned, he could refer to the sack of pebbles instead of rounding up the herd again. Put the pebbles on a frame and numbers could be stored simply by changing the pebbles positions. Mechanical memories use all kinds of symbols, such as lines carved in marble, so you won't forget the glory of the past. Or strings on fingers, so you won't forget to pay your light bill. The familiar light switch is much closer in time and spirit to the kind of memory computers actually use. Lamp on, lamp off. Either way, this simple equipment is one bit or binary digit of information. With more lamps, greater quantities of information can be stored. But mechanical switches and lamps are too slow. Modern computers use fast magnetic memory devices, such as tapes or disks, stacked like jukebox records, or tiny cores woven together like Indian beads. Large computers use these and other types of memory devices to achieve tremendous storage capacities. The computer being queried by this librarian can give her instant information on the whereabouts of any of the thousands of books in her charge. If remembering were the only definition of thinking, we'd have to put computers in the mental giant category. It is not to think, to subject to the process of logical thought. Playing chess certainly involves a high degree of logic. And this computer at MIT has been programmed to play a very respectable game. Its human opponent studies his move on an actual chessboard before feeding it into the computer. The 
computer then performs logic operations to determine its next move and displays it on this screen. It has even won first place in an amateur tournament. But how can a collection of wired hardware be capable of logic? Basically, logic is a predictable series of facts or events, such as closing this switch and this one to ring the bell. In fact, computer people call this a logic AND circuit. The same components can be rewired into a logic OR circuit to ring the bell by closing either this switch or this one. AND, OR, and many other kinds of elementary logic circuits are the basic building blocks that form the complex logic networks we call computers. The computer controlling this electronic telephone switching office makes millions of logical decisions every day, all with the infallible logic it takes to quickly connect the telephone to any of the more than 100 million other telephones in this country. That would be pretty good thinking if logic were the only definition. There is also visualization to think, to form a mental picture of. All of us are capable of translating symbols into mental images. But computers aren't nearly as imaginative. They are very good, however, at taking abstract data, processing it, and producing pictures on cathode ray tubes. These are the complex motions of an orbiting satellite as seen from outer space. Even more interesting is the computer's ability to simulate designs or systems. This scientist at Bell Telephone Laboratories is designing an electronic circuit by drawing with a light pen on the face of a television screen connected to a computer. He can make changes in the design and simulate its operation without the necessity of actually building it. When it comes to memory, logic, or forming images, we computers are pretty good thinkers. Just a minute. Aren't there any other definitions? Uh, uh, yes, to think, to perceive, or recognize. I think that's Mary. When it comes to recognition, computers are still pretty inept. They can be made to see by means of optical or magnetic sensors, such as those used by this bank check reader. But so far, computers are limited to recognizing simple, well-defined patterns, like post office zip code numbers, provided they're typed and properly positioned. But teaching a computer to generalize, to recognize that all these symbols mean the same thing, is more difficult. When it comes to language translation, computers aren't very bright either. Some progress is being made, but the problems are enormous. Essentially, they boil down to one fact. There is no such thing as an absolute one-to-one -one correspondence between the words of one language and those of another. For example, when out of sight, out of mind was put through one translating computer, it came out as the foreign language equivalent of invisible imbecile. Imagine what mechanical translation would do to slang. 
It is a frightening thought. May I go on to the next definition? To think, to have feeling or consideration for. Computer programmers have been known to fall in love with their computers, but no computer was ever observed returning the sentiment. In fact, computers are absolutely devoid of feelings, and a good thing, too. They neither play favorites with programmers, nor get angry at their mistakes. Best of all, they never get bored. Like other machines, they can do the same monotonous chores all day long without complaining. But they can be programmed to simulate human emotion. Getting arty? I'll bet your next definition involves creativity. Right. To think. To create or devise. Creativity. A word just as hard to define as thinking still seems to be a uniquely human capability. So far, no computer has ever composed a hit song. Painted a beautiful picture. Or designed an original dragster. But computers can be programmed to appear creative. All these pictures were drawn by computers. computer has been used to produce animated pictures as well. One animated film produced by a computer is on the subject of producing animated films on a computer. The technique has already produced some interesting results. Like the pictures, the music you are listening to was also produced by a computer. computer, an ingenious collection of electronic hardware, was created by man. It is also man who creates the programs that make the computer the useful tool that it is. Without a program, a computer is no more productive than a player piano without a music roll, or a jukebox without a record. Still, whether the big machines are creative or not, is irrelevant when you consider their usefulness and efficiency. Billions of correct mathematical operations between errors. The equivalent of a thousand people computing for a lifetime without making a mistake. But do they think? Well, let's say they carry out some processes that are similar to human thought. Or better yet, let's just say it all depends on what you mean by thinking. 